This is Chippy with UMC Portal and I've got the UMID BZ here, or BZ if you're uh, English. And this is a clamshell UMPC based on the 1.2 GHz Menlo platform. It's been talked about before as the MBOOK M2. And it's really uh, just a, an improvement over the original M1 in terms of design and a couple of other features that I'll show you. Before I get into it though, I want to say that on Monday the 20... 6th or the 25th, no, the 25th of January, we'll be doing a live session with this at umcportal.com slash live, where I'll be uh, showing you around the device, taking questions and answers, and uh, I'm doing some demos of video playback, etc, etc. But here's a quick uh, run around the device for you anyway. So, different to the MBOOK M1 is that UMID have now changed the ports from proprietary to standard uh, ports. So what we've got is a VGA uh, port here. Actually, that is slightly proprietary. There is an adapter cable for it. We're going to demo that in a second. This is a headset port. It looks like a headphone port because there's only the headphone sign on it. But looking at the supplied and uh, headset, one, it leads me to believe, leads me to believe that that's actually a headphone and headset because it's got the four pin or the four pole um, adapter on it. So USB 2 standard, that's good for USB uh, sound cards, video capture devices, mics, external device, uh, storage, etc. 7.5 volt DC in, uh, Kensington lock port. The battery runs across the back and uh, it's actually quite a well-designed battery at the back there. It doesn't stick out too far, but it provides decent capacity for at least four hours, and I'm seeing probably about five hours of average use on this. This port here is for the uh, Korean version, which has uh, DMB or whatever their local version of digital terrestrial TV is. And across the front, that's where the SIM card slot would be on the 3G versions. I don't have any details on whether those 3G versions are going to be available. And then there's a micro SD card slot on this side. Uh, mic input here, um, so that you can actually use this as a pretty good Skype device. It's um, um, got a 1.3, no, a 0 0.3 megapixel webcam. That's good enough for Skype. And in fact, sometimes 0 0.3 is slightly more efficient than 1.3, and you get a better frame rate. This is a, a recessed optical mouse button. That wasn't on the M1, so that helps you to use the device in this kind of fashion, two-handed. It's very much a two-handed device, this. Optical mouse with the mouse pointer, uh, sorry, the mouse buttons on the left-hand side there. Mono speaker uh, there. Going around the device, then you've got a um, mechanical keyboard. This is not a click-type keyboard, so it's actually not as good as some other devices I've used for thumb typing, it's kind of a touch typing style mechanics in a thumb typing uh, device, which not uh, optimal, but uh, you can certainly get used to this and it uh, uh, can get pretty fast if you practice. Power button, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on off, they can be switched on and off separately. A um, couple of indicator buttons there. So uh, this has been in hibernation. One of the great things about clamshell devices, you just close them up and they go into standby. Uh, and if you've got the power settings configured correctly, they'll pop into to hibernation. Um, so what I want to demo very quickly is this coming out of hibernation because one of the, uh, <laughs> well, they'll call it a feature now. One of the uh, features of this is, it only, is that it's only got 512 megs of RAM and uh, it runs XP Home. That's actually not too bad for you know a handful of apps or a handful of tabs. But one of the great advantage is, uh, advantages is, is that it comes out of hibernation pretty quickly. So once we get through the, the BIOS, you'll see that zip through, there we go, zip, zipping through the load and Coming out of hibernation is done. Oh, that was the mouse pointer. Just waiting for the screen to come back. There we go. So that's like a 10 second or 15 second hibernation. So way better than sort of smart boot because you're straight into a situation there where everything's um, up running and uh, if you had the Wi-Fi connected before, it wouldn't take too long for it to be reconnected. So I like that feature. That's uh, quite nice. Um, one and two, four by six hundred screen on that, and as I said, Windows XP. But let's quickly see if we can demo this uh, VGA cable. I haven't tried this yet, 
but this is going to be an interesting uh, demo because I've got a, an HD screen here in front of me. Let's see if we can get VGA out to work on this because this will be a fun little demo with a 21, 21 inch screen with an HD one, uh, 1920 by 1080 output. I've got the uh, VGA cable set up here. So I'm just going to plug that in. Device has hung. No, it hasn't. It was just pausing for some reason. So let's go to graphics options, output to monitor. Let's see if that works. Let's switch the input on this one. Let's see if that comes up. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can switch the resolution. So properties, so we should be able to do a native. Oh, it is doing native, 1920 by 1080. So come on, it's worth doing a little uh, demo here. See if we can get some YouTube fun going. This will um, handle 380p and 480p videos pretty well, but don't expect HD, an HD experience out of this at all. Uh, in theory, the um, Flash 10.1 might work with this platform because this has got HD hardware decoding in it. So let's see if we can go to full screen. Okay, so on the big 1920 by 1080 screen, the performance isn't that good. So in uh, windowed mode, that's fine. No problems there. Let's see if I can get um, a video to play. If I've got a video installed. Not sure that I have actually. Um, no, I'm gonna have to install a player. Give me two seconds, I'll install the player and then we'll see if we can play, play back a video. Okay, what I'm quickly going to do here is plug my keyboard and mouse in. Give me a little bit uh, easier control. So, USB mouse, uh, USB wireless keyboard. Should pick that up pretty quickly. And there we go. Right. So actually this gives you a good feeling of, good impression of how the thing works uh, in a kind of desktop mode. I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is a bit crazy. This 400 gram device is actually the desktop now. And I'm using it uh, here with uh, KM Player installed. Right, let's see if we can install, I've got one video that might work. Let's see if that works. KM player is just installed. Oh, that's a very small one. That's a shame. Oh, very, very small video. All right. So I'm going to go straight to my network and pull off a video that I know I've got somewhere on my network. And this is the great thing about these MI, sorry, these UMPCs, is that the same pro that you can use exactly the same processes that you use on your normal desktop. So you know that networking is going to work. You know that you're going to be able to get to your SMB shares. Um, you know that your video applications that you use on the desktop are going to work. The only thing you have to watch is, uh, of course, uh, processing power. So let's see if we can play this one. That's a fairly low res one. Let's see if we can get a 720p video playing. Turn. Delete that one, that was a pretty poor quality one. So this is should be a 720p. Um, 
I think of around two megabits per second. See if it works. Okay, not super smooth. I'm not sure whether it's using CPU or whether it's using DXVA. If we have a look at the performance. Let's try it full screen. Not brilliant. Yeah, that's not fantastic actually, but that was a two megabit to H.264 video. I don't know, maybe I need to do some uh, optimizations. I was actually expecting that one to to work okay. Anyway, you get the idea. This thing is working as a, let's call it an emergency desktop. Certainly uh, web seems to be working without any problems at all. And uh, actually page load times are pretty quick. I'm on uh, Wi-Fi here over a local connection uh, a couple of walls away but uh, there's Engadget fully loaded and um, looking pretty good with flash as well so that's the Umid BZ as I said Monday night 26th uh, sorry 25th uh, do a live demo of this you can actually get these from uh, I think dynamism.com are the only places that have these for pre-order outside South Korea at the moment so check them out 400 and, no, 549 including that VGA adapter. Alright, that's enough for now. This is Steve Payne, Chippy from UMC Portal with the Humid MBook BZ. Thanks for watching.